I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good, good. Yeah, you're live. Great. How's everyone doing? Hello. Oh, it's live. It's streaming live. So we can now, guys, we can take on uh, all your questions. Anything that you have, Arathi is here with us. And I am also here. Uh, Dr. Rupa is also here. So we can all take any of the questions that you have. And we'll be more than happy to answer these questions. I think someone had asked a question which is not uh, relative to sports. But maybe Dr. Rupa, you can take that on. I think it was around something around that. Uh, what about smaller cities where there are there is no milk available, like cashew milk or vegan cheese is not available, or ice cream is not available? How what will we do about that? Like in in smaller cities, like second tier cities, third tier cities, and 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 a lot of talk in vegan world is always about soya milk and and almond milk and vegan ice cream and vegan cheese and and so they are like this is vegan world. Then what are we going to eat? So uh, let me tell you that uh, I'm sure. Kuntal, you are vegan for more than 18 years now. Right. And I've been also vegan for more than 13 years. So when we became vegan, I heard the first word vegan about 13, 14 years ago. And then uh, there was nothing available in the market. There was no roadmap. We just knew what not to take. But we didn't know how to convert or how to you know, make new things. So I started all the experiments in my own kitchen. And I started making soya milk, almond milk, cashew milk. I started making best of the cheese. I made uh, curd from the groundnut and um, rice milk combination. It took a few months to really get better and better at it. So that was a the situation then. And I remember that the first time if I go to the supermarket and if I see a small carton of a soya milk, I would just have shine in my eyes. That's vegan milk, you know, something like that. I remember that was many years ago. Then, you know, Strieta and all those companies used to come and, you know, uh, we would just do it. It was now over the years, like 13 years, I see in food hall an entire wall full of plant based milk, not just one or two. And so many products, everything cheese, curd, butter, everything is available. However, now in small town India, also, all these things are going to be available because of online shopping. In our own expo now, there are various exhibitors who have online shopping. One of them is Urban Platter. One of them is Vegan Mall. One of them is Vegan Dukan. There's also Eco Trunk, who has not taken the stall, but Monica is, will be there in the attendee. She has also. So they also start delivering everywhere, and there's a network that is happening. However, now, after many years, I do not have any of those packaged products in my own home. In my refrigerator, I hardly use them. I, I, I never have to rush around thinking where is vegan food, I must have them, I must stock them or something. Because now I just found out obviously the simplest thing, roti, sabji, dal, chawal, and a salad is vegan. All fruits are vegan, salads are vegan. So sprouts are uh, healthy, all these things. So it's very simple lifestyle, my household. If I'm going somewhere, people tell me, you should carry your own curd. I said, well, it's okay if I don't have. I'll figure it out, you know, instantly if I want to make something out of it. So what I would suggest that agree, when you give up something in the beginning, you need something for transition. At that time, maybe you want to look for replacements and packaged products, which is also all right. Even there are meat replacements available. There are four big companies in India that I know are fantastic, serving fantastic meat replacements. There are many restaurants who have on their menu, you know, all these meat alternatives. So you use them, eat them, enjoy. And after a while, I think your body will start asking for less of those because somehow the food that are coming from animal origin, I find them are addictive. The foods coming from the plant origin are not addictive because somewhere it addresses a part of us, which in my language, I call it as santosh. That means something that's, you know, brings out satiety in us and doesn't make you addict. You will not be addicted to apple, I'm sure, or carrots or bananas or something, or even mung beans. We will not be addicted. Those foods will not call out, you know, 
come and eat me or something. Everything else that is packaged, processed, and also animal products somehow seem to make us very dependent. So that thing goes away. You life becomes very simple, and you still enjoy a lot lot of varieties of food, and it sustains our body very very well. And our energy levels are still. I think I am at sixteen and seventeen year old. You know energy levels, and you two are the big, biggest example of just eating all. ghar ka khana and you know outperforming all the time so uh, this is what i would recommend sure products are available take them this entire vegan expo is for two purposes the purpose number one all these lectures talks are to create the awareness and tell you why you should go vegan and the second step is how to go vegan so how to go vegan are so many different products so we wanted everybody on the same platform go explore learn there are so many things suddenly i got a message today someone completely new never knew there are so many vegan companies there are so many vegan people so so many like really top vegan people so this is the platform for them come meet learn there are also a lot of video conferencing um, facilities lounge facilities everything is there for next two days uh we are open 24/7 we started at 12 a.m in the night and the lectures were streaming and some people were watching them so 24 hour uh, 7 72 hours all filled up with loads of interesting talks so that's how get going this is my message now uh, over to you two at least uh, let's see if nandita has any questions i think okay. i i just saw one more question so uh, arathi maybe we can uh, take on this question so uh, maybe you can go first the question is is there a difference between non veg muscle building and vegan muscle building uh, i think one thing that i have to tell the audience here is that first of all both arathi and i have been vegetarians all our life and at some point we decided to go vegans so we can't distinguish between non veg muscle building and vegan muscle building but we can definitely talk about vegetarian muscle building and vegan muscle building because in vegetarian world also people will always say things like paneer khao and a uh, lot of people even consider chicken vegetarian lot of people even consider eggs to be vegetarian so they will say chicken khao eggs khao dood pio you will never hear someone saying apple kha ke muscle banao ya banana kha ke muscle banao ya spinach kha ke muscle banao and by the way you know i am actually i think wo kha ke tum muscle bana sakte ho is what i'm even getting to but maybe uh, arathi i can we can talk about your experiences since you even spoke about building muscle or especially your muscle definition uh, while on a vegan diet compared to the vegetarian diet so maybe you can touch upon that and then even i can speak about it oh, we can't hear you can you hear me now yes now we can hear you Uh, I mean, thanks for the opportunity once again to answer to the point on on building, you know, quality muscles. Uh, just being vegan, uh, I am I'm definitely an example for that. Uh, I've always kind of maintained my weight at sixty sixty two because that's an ideal weight for my my kind of a sport because you need to be aerodynamic. But having said that, the amount of uh, intensity that goes into a, a quality muscle is very important, and uh, I've 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 actually seen a huge difference in terms of my muscle development and in terms of the quality uh, i have got signs i have got stats with me we have measured my muscle mass in in terms of pre and post you know turning to be a vegan and even during the course of the initial days to now uh, there's been a lot of uh, research that i've done and i've experimented on myself and uh, definitely in terms of muscle quality mass definition there is a huge huge uh, improvement and that is invariably or you know it's kind of showing in my performance these days super thank you so much i i think this was very very helpful and just to add to what uh, arathi said uh, i am just going to share a couple of things about uh, anyone who is looking to build muscle i think the most important thing that you have to remember when building muscle is a concept called progressive overloading and essentially this is loading your muscles progressively over a period of time because when you load a muscle through either intensity or through either extra weight or through either extra repetitions what you do is you break down the muscle and then your body gets a chance to recover and rebuild the muscle and when it rebuilds the muscle it builds it slightly bigger the next time 
and this process is not something uh, oh in one week i have put on 5 pounds of muscle that does not happen it's like takes maybe a year or even maybe more than a year to start putting on some serious muscle on your body some quality muscle on your body and of course the amount of protein in your diet and your diet generally overall the carbohydrates you are eating the fats the healthy fats you are eating the micronutrients that you are putting in the body all of these matter because uh, when the body uh, is rebuilding the muscle it requires those nutrients in proper quanti quantity uh, the myth is that there is no protein available in the vegan world and that is a complete myth uh, arathi is one of the fastest uh, vegan iron mans uh, in entire india uh, she has been an athlete all her life and she has been able to build muscle build endurance while eating meat free diet uh i have been climbing mountains for the last 10 years and i have never even i did all my work on vegan diet so i never had to even eat dood or paneer or anything to build any kind of fitness okay there are ample of foods in the vegan world which have a very good protein profile so you do not have to worry about that just ensure that you are eating enough calories and that you are eating a well nicely rounded well balanced diet and you will not have any problems building muscle building muscle is not about maine protein khaya aur main superman ban gaya main next in you know uh, i am the biggest bodybuilder in the world if that was the case everyone would be a bodybuilder so building muscle is is about a lot of things it's about your genetics it's about how you are working out it's about your recovery it's about the food you are putting in it's about the sleep you are having it's a kind of a holistic lifestyle that you have to live in order to build that muscle build that endurance and build that performance so yeah i i hope that sort of clarifies that uh, that they it, to answer your question shortly there is no difference between uh, building muscle on a non veg diet or a vegan diet on the contrary if there is any difference it is all positive differences on the vegan diet because non vegetarian diet comes with extra cholesterol extra saturated fat Uh, extra hormones extra antibiotics in the food the kind of cruelty towards the animals the kind of unsustainable practices that are used uh, in producing the protein i think if you are someone who's looking to build muscle vegan diet in my opinion would be a very good choice that you can make Excellent. are there yes there are questions there are questions there are quite a few nandita will repeat them sure. there is a question by monica a my family is trying to convince me to eat ghee and milk all the time how do i convince them uh, to try veganism they are not ready to try arathi i think uh, you can take this one on i think you we even i think spoke about something like this about ghee and and, and all those things i we can't hear you arathi so it's more of a mental uh, barrier for a lot of people uh, Coming from a, a Brahmin family where ghee and and things are the uh, you know uh, ingredients of the day to day activity. Speak loudly, no? Yeah. Uh, can you hear now? Yeah. So yeah, ghee uh, ghee butter has kind of been a staple food uh, in in my household uh, before I got into being a vegan. So. i can totally relate to that uh, because still my my mom still feels you know i get i i kind of don't get a lot of uh, micronutrients because i'm not having ghee uh, but i've kind of uh, uh, you know try to do my research and figure out you know I, there is definitely an alternative for anything and everything uh, it's just a mindset uh, i have like a 2 teaspoons of coconut oil in the morning before i start my heavy workout so which kind of uh, replicates what ghee gives to me in in terms of the fat content and uh, you know the micronutrients level uh, so there is there is definitely an alternative to it is is just that you need to make up your mind to uh, you know try to convince them if they don't then at least follow what's what's right for you okay the next question is from surjat uh, surya uh, kuntal sir what are the sources of protein in 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 vegan sources can you repeat that i couldn't hear the middle portion yeah what are the lean sources of protein in vegan sources okay uh, when you are talking about lean sources uh, i think everything from all your lentils uh, are lean sources 
all your uh, beans are lean sources uh, in uh, soybean is a lean source so everything coming out of soybean which is tofu or uh, tempeh all of that is a good nice lean source uh, essentially all the plant protein powders available in the market made from pea protein or made from a combination of pea and rice protein or even uh, a whole bunch of uh, seed proteins are mixed with them so again most of the plant protein powders in the market are lean proteins because they are primarily a protein source and they have minimal fat or minimal carbs in them sure lentils have carbs in them and even beans have carbs in them whole grains and all of those have carbs in them but they are much better well balanced meals because they also have a fair bit of fiber in them they also have uh, micronutrients in them like vitamin b's and uh, vitamin a's and all of those things so i think uh, if you are looking out for leaner sources of protein practically entire plant based world all the protein sources in plant based world are in that sense lean sources of protein uh, and if i were you i would not be worried about hey i'm going to consume a lean source of protein or what source of protein or this just don't get into that just ensure that you are eating a decently well balanced diet and and yes include protein sources so that like don't just say that mai mai din mein 30 banana khaunga and that is going to be my diet that's not going to be a very smart choice to make so uh, include proper carbs include proper healthy fats uh, healthy fats are also as important and include enough amount of protein probably uh, i would think that for a for someone who's a serious athlete or someone who's seriously into fitness you should be eating at least about 1.5 grams of protein per kg of your body weight so if you are someone maybe about 80 kilos or something then maybe eat about try and eat about 80 kilos 80 uh, grams of protein at least or not, if you can increase it to maybe 90 grams or 100 grams that would also be good uh, but again yeah i think if you are like you know if you are eating four meals a day and if you are ensuring that these are all balanced meals and they are in the right Uh, sizes in terms of calories and in terms of the volumes uh, and you are feeling satiated uh, you are already eating a, a pretty decent well balanced diet uh, if you are someone who's seriously thinking about taking on a sport like maybe do an ironman uh, or maybe climb mountains or maybe get into a specific sport then i think the best way forward would be to get a coach or get some guidance like i know that arathi is an ironman coach and she guides people of how they can start their ironman journey she guides them in terms of what foods they can eat and how they can train so if you're someone who's looking to uh, get into a serious sport and try to design your diet i would say get some help so that you are uh, if you are having a good well balanced diet that is okay but the coaches can help you make it a lot better arathi anything that you want to add Uh, absolutely that that uh, i mean point on uh, yes uh, there are a lot of uh, nutritionists a uh, sports nutritionists available in india who are uh, specialized in uh, vegan uh, diet plan as well so if you don't have the expertise uh, don't hesitate there are so many of them out there uh, call for help text them uh, i mean at least for me i had a lot of these sports nutrition who came you know forward to help me out in the initial days i was clueless about lot of things uh, i had b12 deficiency which i never even realized i would you know land up having so there are small small things that needs to be taken care uh, as uh, kuntal very rightly pointed out uh, having a balanced meal is all you need uh, make sure you have the right amount of carbs protein uh, fibers and everything in your meal Uh, Nandita. Yeah. The next question is from Vatsal Nathwani. He is asking: Is it okay to consume five meals per day, half of two hours? Seventy percent of the meal is raw vegan, full salad, and to go raw vegan for spiritual reasons, it connects us with him. I I think uh, eat as much as you want. I am not someone who believes that. <laughs> you should eat one meal a day and then you should do intermittent fasting and and that you should do this and that do what is sustainable to you as long as you are eating healthy and you are happy with your body weight you are happy with your performance uh, 
stick to what is sustainable for for you uh, i personally feel that four meals uh, a day spaced out uh, evenly uh, and not like one meal mein tumne sirf banana khaya and then one meal mein sirf tumne walnuts khaya one meal mein tumne sirf ye khaya uh, i eat four well balanced meals evenly spaced out through, throughout the day uh, because a lot of research has shown that that it, and with the right protein content uh so that there is proper muscle synthesis that is getting triggered uh in every single of meal that i am eating so i would think that five meals a day shouldn't be uh shouldn't be an issue as long as you are able to sustain it and as long as you are able to uh, pull it off i don't see why i i think it's up to you one meal a day five meal a day two meals a day 10 meals a day up to you uh, any Arathi, any anything from your side? To add to that, uh, I have six meals a day, so <laughs> <laughs> sit down uh, every two hours. And again, I mean, I come from a very uh, performance-driven kind of a me. We can't hear you, Arathi. Okay. So I come from a very performance-driven uh, meal plan, so I kind of have six meals a day. So every two hours, I have a meal. uh and it's basically depending on my next day's workout so if i have an intense workout for like 2 hours like today i had a 16 kilometers run uh and i had to run it in a specific pace so there is a lot of intensity that's going into so my meal kind of starts from the previous day's lunch and then it goes on to the uh, on on the days uh, you know like today's morning till uh, i mean the meal plan is planned in such a way it starts from the previous day afternoon to you know a pre activity meal so for me it's it's a all i mean it's a total different ball game because it's i'm performance driven and it's an endurance kind of a sport and where nutrition kind of plays the fourth key discipline in triathlon uh, for a normal person with with the, like say 30 minutes of a walk or a run kind of a person five meals is perfectly fine when you're when you're into a raw a uh, vegan kind of a diet uh, it's good you you kind of have your balanced uh, m- uh, meal there uh, but just make sure that uh, you know you don't have any kind of a deficiency uh, keep testing once in a while uh, i do i mean i do all all the vitamin micro uh, minerals test uh, once in 200 days to make sure i i don't have any kind of a deficiency because uh, it's for me it's performance driven it's endurance driven so i cannot uh, i need to be race ready every day uh, of course now because of covid there are no races happening uh, but once the lockdowns are lifted i don't know when my races are going to come in so i need to be race ready every day i should be able to do a half ironman distance uh, you know uh, just getting off the bed the next day morning so that's that's how important uh, for me the sport is and uh, having said uh, nutrition plays a very very important role in triathlon kind of a sport so if not i mean if you're not a, a hardcore sports person but you are an active uh, having an active lifestyle of say working out 30 minutes to a 1 hour uh, please make sure uh, you have sufficient nutrition in your food and it's important to have a balanced meal a lot of us forget on the balance part of it we we say okay i do i take protein i take carbs so are you in a day having a balanced meal is very important and how much of an hydration are you taking a lot of us forget to drink water i ha- i have lot of my trainees who come and tell i drank only 2 liters of water i say you need a minimum of 4 4 and a half liters of fluid going into your body to kind of keep your muscles and your body hydrated it's very important a lot of us forget about it especially in the winters because the climates get cold we kind of forget to drink water i i kind of set alarm in my watch and in my phone i keep sipping water every half an hour to 45 minutes so hydration is a key a lot lot of us forget about it so yeah okay then thanks arthi the next question is by uh, sushant bodke his question is can you share any homemade vegan recipe which you which is made in a unique and easy way uh i can talk about a smoothie that i make every morning and not that it's unique it's a smoothie uh i just take oats Uh, i mix the oats with maybe some uh, some kind of a seed maybe like a, a sesame seed or like a flax seed or like a sabja seeds or something and i i and i keep it overnight uh, maybe i mix in some green powder 
uh, either it could be a powder it could just be greens uh, that i have like a spinach or something and then i add a scoop of peanut butter to it and then maybe i add a scoop of uh, protein powder to it and then i add maybe a couple of bananas to eat uh, to it and then i blend it so it's like a really nice balanced meal in terms of i get decent carbs from it i get decent protein from it and i get decent healthy fats from it so it's like a really nice start to uh, my day every day and the best thing is it's super convenient to make because all you are doing is all the ingredients are ready you are just putting them in a blender and blending it for maybe 60 or 80 seconds and then just you have to drink it and uh, it typically keeps me satiated for 4 hours minimum uh, like i don't have any cravings to eat anything else during that time um, yeah that's that's kind a kind of a very simple recipe like a su- simple breakfast smoothie recipe cool thanks arthi anything uh, to arthi i have something very uh, similar to that uh, like my pre workout uh, smoothie as it just has uh, one banana like a scoop of puppy uh, protein uh, because i have a hectic uh, you know after sh- after workout schedule that i need to come back to work and and spend about 12 hours here so i kind of have my protein before my workout uh, i have with bananas uh, with lot of dry fruits uh, one scoop of peanut butter uh, into it and just blend it and have it before a workout so anything from say 2 to 4 hours of a workout this is the the ultimate uh, you know <laughs> go get for me and uh, for the next 2 3 hours i don't have to worry about anything other than sipping water during my workout so yeah this is something that i have almost four times in a week okay thanks kuntal arthi the next question is two questions from anonymous user his first question was uh, is uh, can is it okay to have honey and his second question is what is a good food after training instead of protein shake um i think is it okay to have honey uh, of course it is not okay to have honey at least now if you are a vegan it is not okay to have honey and and honey is bee food why would we eat bee food in in first place so anyway i don't want to get into the details if you are a vegan it is not okay to eat honey but if you are not not a vegan and if you are aspiring to be a vegan then maybe you can uh, start with honey because it's generally easier to remove from your diet uh because there are so many alternatives to honey there's date syrup and there's whole bunch of other sweeteners that are out there um a- anything from your side about this one arati yeah agree uh yeah i i don't believe in having honey at all that's the first thing i stop uh, uh more than anything else. so yeah i completely agree on that okay yeah. and nandita can you repeat the second question sorry what is a good food after training instead of a protein shake oh uh, look it's not like you want to put i mean uh, sure it is good to put maybe some amount of protein in your body after a workout because it maybe helps there is something called an anabolic window that a lot of people talk about but uh, frankly speaking if you don't really like put something uh, in your body in half an hour then nothing is going to really go wrong as such uh a protein powder shake uh, smoothie would be good but instead of that if you just maybe eat a scoop of peanut butter or uh, combined with some fruits whatever i mean there's so many other sources of protein maybe you could just eat a a, a sandwich with uh, peanut butter or a sandwich with some tahini inside it or sand or some bananas i mean eat something if you are hungry eat something it's not necessary or if you are just going to eat your dinner just eat your dinner uh, i am not someone who's like hey half an hour after your workout you really need to put something in your body that's the only way your body is going to recover no i typically just schedule my workouts in such a way that i am working out between a couple of meals so once i finish the workout in anyways one and half to two hours i'm going to put a decent meal in my body and that's a well balanced meal which is going to help with recovery in any case mm. arati mm. uh, well to add on to that uh, uh, just a different perspective to it uh, when you kind of do a intense work out so what what does your body kind of lose uh, and uh, the minute you come out of a workout so how long or what is the time duration you're going to take to have your first meal is very important uh, say if a uh, lot of us these days you know of course now it's covid otherwise we kind of take our selfies spend some 
time with our friends and by the time we reach home and have our first meal uh, you know after a workout is kind of delayed so what basically happens is your body is already craving for a lot of food and and then that's when the you know when there is no sufficient intake going into the body to fulfill that craving uh, that's when all these you know muscle fatigueness and things like that kind of crop up uh, so generally what people recommend is to have a recovery drink which is a, a you know a 3 to 1 ratio of protein with carbs so that you know if you have done an intensive workout it kind of uh, helps you to recover immediately but if you are someone who's not going to loiter around just after your workout just go home and have a solid you know, balanced meal then i don't see a need for a recovery a drink or a a a, a pea protein a recovery drink or anything of that sort if you're going to have a balanced breakfast uh then that's that's more than enough because i generally uh, don't have a, a recovery drink after a workout unless and until i know i'm going to spend a couple of more hours outdoor before i have my first meal then i do otherwise i have a very tight schedule so i know i'm going to go home in the next 15 20 minutes have my breakfast uh, so i i i think i kind of answered uh, his question there yeah i think we're out of time so we end here there was one more question but i don't think we have the time yeah we can we can just if you can just put it in the chat we'll answer it in the chat whenever we get a chance oh, okay And we are having panels every day, so yes. there will be question and answer sessions. Yeah. All right. So thanks a lot to Arthi and Kuntal for answering questions in such detail. It was very informative. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming here on the platform. Thank you.